I'd like to introduce you to Forrest Thompson. Uh, Forrest Thompson has been an attorney in Medina County for over 22 years with extensive jury trial and bench trial litigation experience in criminal, domestic, civil, and probate law. He has rep represented cases all throughout the state of Ohio. He is a veteran of the U.S. Air Force where he served as a law enforcement officer in anti-terrorism, canine training for explosives, and was a diplomat escort for both foreign and domestic. He received numerous awards, medals, and commendations during his service. Forrest attended Edinburgh University in Pennsylvania where he received his Bachelor of Arts majoring in political science, graduating cum laude. He was appointed to the governor, by the governor to serve on the university's Council of Trustees. He then attended the University of Akron School of Law, receiving his Juris Doctorate in 1993. He was sworn in by the Supreme Court of Ohio in 1994. During law school, Attorney Thompson served as law clerk to the Honorable W.F. Spicer in the Summit County Probate Court. Forrest is a past member of the Medina County GOP Republican Committee, Ohio State Bar Association, Hospice of Wadsworth, Ducks Unlimited, National Wild Turkey Federation, Rocky Mountain Elk Federation, NRA, and past president of Wadsworth Lions Club. So welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming today. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, let's start by first talking a little bit to our viewers at home. Uh, if you can describe what the role of the county prosecutor is. Well, primarily the, the county prosecutor serves as the, um, the legal representation for all governmental aspects of the county, uh, as well as the more commonly known uh, aspect of the prosecution of all felony level crimes within the county. Okay. Um, that's a general summarization of of what the county prosecutor's office does. Right, okay. Well, we talked about your bio a little bit, but let's talk about uh, why you're running and, and uh, kind of how your background pertains to this position and what, you know, what got you interested in, in running for this position. The, the background that, as, as you've read in the bio, my background involved law enforcement. Um, unfortunately, I never, I never really got to serve in much of a uh, predominantly law enforcement capacity. That is, I didn't do um, uh, road patrols or arrests right. or things like that because I was um, I was advanced into a much more specialized area, um, which required uh, a great deal of mobilization and a great deal of uh, a great deal of flexibility. Okay. Um, but I've always loved the law. Uh, I've always been fascinated by the process, um, and uh, that that love of the law has evolved through the years uh, since I was in my 20s, uh, which was the driving force for me to go to college in order to go to law school. Right. Um, and and it has continued to grow and it's continued to evolve. Um, we are at a there are there are elements in our community today that are. Um, creating something of a crossroads for, for the law enforcement community uh, and for the legal community in general. Uh, specifically, um, the, the overwhelming issue that we have today with drugs and right. other issues, all of which I have um, I've watched closely, I've had to deal with in my professional capacity, and all of those things have sort of evolved and led me to, to take the direction of attempting to put myself in a position where I can extend additional help to the community into the county. Right, you see uh, ad headlines of overdoses and so forth. And yes, as a matter of fact, there was a headline in the, in the news today, something about, uh, and I just caught a glimpse of it, but it was about uh, uh, numerous cases of uh, Narcan having to be administered in Wadsworth. Yeah. Uh, my office was in Wadsworth for f almost 18 years. Right. Uh, that's a community that I that I have a, a very close affinity to. My children attend high school there. Um, it frightens me. Yeah. Um, and it, and as I'm sure it frightens every citizen in the community. And uh, so those are the types of things that really um, brought me to make the decision. Um, uh, you know, to take this step to 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 delve into politics uh, and to run for county prosecutor. Right. It sounds like with your background, both in law enforcement, uh, uh, or with in law enforcement and your law degree, it, it sounds like it kind of set the stage for 
for something like this? Well, I, I think other people have felt the same way, and I think I do too. Uh, I've tried a lot of cases in Medina County over the past uh, 23 years or so, and uh, I have nothing but respect for the system. Uh, our judges have been top-notch. Um, uh, you know, our, all, of the, all of the participating parties, all of the members of the bar uh, have the community's best interest at heart. Right. Um, it may not always come across that way on individual on an individual basis, but from uh, the most preeminent attorneys in the community and to to the newest members of the bar, uh, that's one of their driving forces. Right. Um, and I, and I'm among that group. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, you you've talked about this a little bit. We talked about it in your bio, but uh, besides everything we've talked about, are there other specific skills or expertise that you would bring to the selected position? Well, the overwhelming caseload that we are dealing with today, as, as anyone who looks at a court docket would know, is drug-related. Yeah. Um, my, a lot of the work that I have done um, has dealt with the elderly and with children. And I don't see those cross-sections of our community um, being adequately represented when they're the victims oh, yeah. of criminal yeah. activity. I understand. Um, I've seen a growing number of cases, as an example, I've seen a growing number of cases of what I, can, what I refer to as uh, financial exploitation of the elderly, where individuals who uh, are, in, are placed in a power uh, a position of power, right. such as a power of attorney or a guardianship or, okay. or just an entrusted individual. Right. Um, and they take advantage of that. They take advantage of the uh, elderly person's finances. Um, I won't bore you with dramatic uh, case examples, but there are numerous where... Uh, but knowing that they won't be double-checking what, what they're doing with the money. Exactly. And, so and, and they've lost their life savings. Right. They've lost their life savings and... I don't believe that a civil judgment is an adequate remedy, and that was one of the motivating factors. I have okay. a great deal of experience in those types of cases, and, um, and I would like to shine the light on those. I would like to bring the prosecutor's office to a position where those cases aren't just given attention but prioritized. Yes, okay. Uh, if you're elected to the prosecutor's office, what would be your top three priorities? Would it be some of what we were just <coughs> talking about with the elderly and protecting them, uh, what, what would be your top three? Well, obviously the elderly, the, as I just mentioned, that would have to be one of my top three. Um, we can't ignore the drug issue, and that, of course, the drug issue has to be a top priority for anyone. But, and it is currently a top issue. Right. There's, there's no doubt about that. But the direction of how the prosecutor's office deals with it uh, is one of, one of the areas that I would focus on. Um, specifically, one of the things that I've been advocating ever since I agreed or ever since I, I decided to run um, was an amnesty style program where individuals can, uh, drug abusers, people, people who are, are in that dependency uh, situation can bring themselves forward, bring themselves to, to a facility uh, surrender their drugs, ask for help right. before they get into the system. The courts have done a wonderful job with the drug court, and it's been expanded. Uh, Judge Collier, Judge Kimbler, um, Judge Dunn, uh, they've all done a wonderful job with, uh, with the drug court programs, but right. those are for individuals who are already in the system. My goal is to expand those horizons and try to, to interject before they get into the Before system. They call them. Yep. Um, coincidentally, it was a program that's just recently been adopted by uh, Hamilton County. Oh, okay. um, there's also a program called the Perry Project that is here in our community and is growing. And uh, I would I would give the credit to uh, Chief Keogh in Lodi being the first um, police department in Medina County to adopt this program. And, it, and it's grown from there. Okay. Uh, and it's getting a lot more attention. Um, so those, those are the two, two, two of the three uh, primary emphasis. Another issue that, as I alluded to previously, was the children. Um, the mark of 
the 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 extent of the drug problem in our community is particularly with children is the fact that Judge Dunn in the probate court, probate and juvenile court, has had to institute a heroin protocol for individuals or young people that are coming into the ju uh, to the juvenile court system. And that, that should tell us how pervasive it is. Right. Um, so you're talking we, about uh, children that are using the drugs, or are you talking about children like uh, uh, with parents that are using it? No, I'm talking about the children that are using oh, the drugs. Yeah, that okay. There's a protocol of testing um, when, when they come into the juvenile system. Oh, I see. <clears throat> and a lot of that, we, we have to expand the role of the prosecutor's office to interdict, to interject ourselves before they get into the system, and the younger the better. Right. Um, so one of the things that I would want to do is institute programs where we are routinely going into the schools. And I don't mean just high schools. I mean middle right. schools. I mean elementary schools where representatives of the office are routinely going in to discuss Educate them at a very children. early age. Educating them earlier, the earlier the better. Right. Um, another issue is uh, the, um, the child support issue that we have. It's a growing problem. There are more and more cases of larger and larger um, uh, arrearages that are prosecutorial level, that is their felony level uh, prosecutions, and those cases need to be prioritized. Those, those folks need to be brought before the court. They need to be held responsible for their obligations to their children. Yeah. Um, that's going to benefit the, that's going to benefit the taxpayers. It's going to benefit the community. It's certainly going to benefit the children. Um, and so those are the areas that I think uh, I would like to focus on. Okay. Uh, what makes your leadership in this position different from the other candidates and why? Well, the only other candidate we have is Mr. Holman, and I certainly am not going to sit here and tell you that I have the 27 plus years of experience that he does. I have nothing but respect for Mr. Holman, and I think that he's done uh, a wonderful job in, in many aspects of the, uh, during, his, during his time as our, our county prosecutor. Mm -hmm. Frankly, he's been the only county prosecutor that we've ever had during my tenure yeah. here in Medina. Um, I think what I bring more so is a, a new perspective, uh, an idea to, with an eye towards expanding the role, interjecting, as I said previously, interjecting prior to their involvement. Um, it, we, are, we are, we in the legal community, we in the judicial area, uh, all throughout law enforcement, I think, uh, are learning more and more that just simply getting tough on the drug cases, right. longer sentences, keeping them off the street, um, you know, more severe punishment, more aggressive prosecution is not the answer. Um, there are those folks who still believe that that's the only way to do it, but we've been doing it since the 70s and it hasn't worked. Right. And without putting too fine a point on it, we, Medina County, along with every other county in the state and every other state in the country, has adopted that program for a very, very long time, and it hasn't been effective. Okay. Those are the things that need to be changed. Yep, I understand. Uh, is there anything else that you would like our viewers to know that we didn't discuss during the interview? Only that uh, my sincere goal is that if I am able to um, become the next county prosecutor, that we can make some material changes, that it's, a, uh, it's an office that will be uh, available to the public, that we need the public's input. input. Um, we may not always agree with it, but I would like to see the prosecutor's office be an office where people can feel as though they were heard. Okay. And the victims can feel as though they've they've been heard and, and their interests are represented. Yes. Okay. Well, Forrest Thompson, I'm going to thank you for coming thank out you. today. On thank you for of having me. I appreciate Medina it very much. Chamber of Commerce. Thank yes, you very sir. much. And thank you. And good luck. Thanks. Thank you. Well, I'd like to welcome Dean Holman here today and uh, tell you a bit about his background and then we'll speak with him as well and learn more about himself. Uh, Dean Holman was elected prosecutor in 1988 and has been the Medina County prosecutor for 28 years. 
He is a graduate of the University of Akron and University of Akron School of Law in 1980. Before being elected prosecutor, Dean Holman was an assistant prosecutor in Medina County from 1981 to 84 and chief trial assistant prosecutor in Huron County from 85 to 86. Dean Holman has a total of 34 years prosecutorial experience. Dean Holman has served as a special prosecuting attorney in eight counties. He is past president of the Ohio Prosecuting Attorneys Association. In 2011, Dean Holman was named Ohio Prosecutor of the Year. As county prosecutor, Dean has personally tried hundreds of felony cases, including aggravated murder, aggravated robbery, rape, and other violent felonies. Since 1988, he has supervised 14,000 felony prosecutions. The Medina County Prosecutor's Office enforces child support orders, working on 1,500 files per year. So, Dean, I want to welcome you here today. Thank you, thank Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to, to speak with us. Thank you. Uh, so, first of all, for the, for the people at home, can you tell us a little bit more about what the role of the county prosecutor is? The county prosecutor, in addition to uh, prosecuting felony cases uh, against adults, also prosecute juvenile uh, cases, traffic, misdemeanors, and, and felonies. And, uh, those who commit those acts are adjudicated delinquent by reason of committing a misdemeanor or a felony or in traffic court. Uh, we also, uh, by Ohio law, the prosecutor's office, I as county prosecutor, I'm the legal advisor for all the county elected officials and county officials, as well as the to- township elected officials and officials. So we serve as legal counsel to the 17 townships, the board of trustees in all those townships, the uh, fiscal officer, the board of zoning appeals, the zoning commission, and the same thing for the county commissioner. You think of all the county officers where their le- legal advisor county auditor, county treasurer, uh, county recorder, the highway engineer, sanitary engineer. So we get involved in that realm in a a multitude of legal tasks, uh, uh, personnel issues, uh, public records issues. We advise the uh, government officials how to properly hold the meeting, uh, sunshine law issues, public public records. Uh, We do labor negotiations for, for the county. Uh, we get involved, we represent them in lawsuits, b- both as plaintiffs and as defendants. If they're sued, if there's insurance, the insurance provides uh, counsel. We monitor the litigation. And one of the lawsuits the Civil Division did a few years ago, uh, the city of Cleveland owed us money on a water agreement and they would not pay. So we, my office on behalf of the county sued the city of Cleveland and got a judgment of $180,000. Okay. Oh, very, very busy, it sounds yeah. like. Uh, well, tell us a little bit about why you're running for re-election and you know what, what it is about aspects of the job that you want to continue what, what, what continues to have you in, your interest in this everything i just mentioned has my interest on the civil side and yeah. on the criminal side i like working with law enforcement to keep our county safe i like the uh, legal ramifications of working as a prosecutor i like the law i like the constitutional law uh, i enjoy trying cases i enjoy yeah. managing people it's nice to have a team that works together and it's nice to be in charge of that team. It's just fulfilling. It's fulfilling yeah. to help victims of crime. It's fulfilling to work with police to in public service to help keep our community safe. Okay, very good. Uh, I, know you, I know you've been in the position for a while, but what are the, the skills and expertise that you've brought to the position and, and will continue to bring should you get reelected? Well, I had, originally, I wanted to improve the prosecutor's office, and which I did, and I started the Victims of Crime program here, the Victim Assistance Program here in Medina County. I started that after I got elected and took office in January of 1989. And the skills I bring, I have a, a an attitude towards crime that is, I have a, that is, uh, I, I want to fairly and aggressively prosecute those who break the law but I have a hard-nosed attitude against crime. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wanted to bring that, as a county prosecutor, I set the tone in the office, as any person who heads up an office does. So I set the tone of fair, aggressive pro- prosecution on the uh, criminal side of the office. On the civil side, I want our advice to be 100% correct and, and as quick as we can be. Right. You know. Okay. Uh, what would be your top three priorities for the prosecutor's office in the, the coming year years? To, to continue to do fair and aggressive prosecution, to do to do a, a good, solid job in all of our cases, to do a good, solid job in trial, to continue to deliver fair, accurate, uh, 
timely delivery of legal advice to our civil clients. Okay, very good. And to continue to serve victims of crime to the best of our ability. To give them a voice. Right. Right, okay. What makes your leadership in, uh, in this position different from other candidates running for this office and why? Well, there's only one other candidate for the, you mean for this term? Yes. My opponent has no experience as a, as a prosecutor at okay. all. And uh, that is the difference in between myself and my opponent. I've been there for 28 years as the county prosecutor, setting the tone, setting uh, the tone for uh, the prosecutors in the office. And when you set the tone for prosecutors, you're also setting the tone for, for police officers, too. Okay. We want fair, honest uh, investigation, aggressive investigation, and fair and honest prosecution of crimes. I'm between myself and my opponent. I'm the only, he's never prosecuted a case I have. Right. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that you would like our viewers to know about yourself that we didn't have a chance to cover during the interview? Uh, I, aside from my duties as a county prosecutor for uh, for the first uh, eight years, I also had a private practice in Brun in uh, Brunswick in Medina County. So I have had uh, a wide array of experience in legal matters. Uh, I've been active in the community. In Medina, in Medina County in Northeast Ohio is on the board of directors of the Cleveland Baseball Federation. It's the group that operates the, the Little League, so to speak, okay. in Cleveland. Yes. We have 5,000 youngsters playing baseball in the city of Cleveland. I was on that board uh, for uh, approximately 10 years. I was on the uh, Kidney Foundation board in Brunswick. And uh, I'm active in a, uh, in, a, in a service organization in Brunswick since 1991 called the Optimus Club. It's a service organization that helps children. Our focus is on help, helping kids. We have essay contests, oratorical contests, fishing derbies. Uh, we help kids with cancer. So, okay. so it's more than just being in the courtroom and reviewing criminal files. I'm, I'm involved in the, in the community. Oh, very good. We also, I also personally get involved in the training of police officers. For uh, years now, I've been bringing, looking for speakers to come in and train them, keep them abreast of changes in the law and search and seizure on Miranda issues. And so, and, and I pay for it fr from the office funds. Oh, okay. So I want to keep our officers trained and up, up to date with all the recent law. Sure. Okay. Well, Dean Holman, we'd like to thank you for coming in today, and uh, myself, Larry Johns, and the, the Ohio Chamber, or Medina Chamber, would like to thank you for coming in and taking your time to uh, tell our viewers more about yourself in the office. That's it? That's it. Oh, you're welcome. You're going to ask me what I want to do in the future, or? Oh, uh, yeah. oh right. sorry, we could talk about that for a second. Okay. I did miss that question. Yeah. Uh, the top three priorities for prosecutor's office coming up in the future. Well, I think I answered your yeah, top Yeah, I guess that was my lead for the, what well, you want to do in the future. Okay. One of the, one of the things, I'm, in fact, I'm working on it now. We're going to have training uh, conducted in the next few weeks. We're seeing people go through the county uh, in, in groups stealing with stolen credit cards or stealing credit cards from okay. cars and purses and, and things like that. Um, the legislature changed the law in, in 2011 that basically tie our judges' hands, it's hard to send, it's almost impossible to send people to prison who commit felonies of fourth and fifth degree. So what I'm going, if we have two or more people who commit two or more crimes that's uh, worth more than a thousand, thousand dollars or more, because that's okay. the law, we're going to go after them for RICO charges, Ohio, you know, organized criminal enterprise activity oh, cases. Okay. So we're going to try to dismantle these rings uh, th that way. And we've used the RICO statute this, this year also on drug rings where people are selling drugs, groups of people are selling heroin. You know, you know heroin's, most sales of heroin are, are felonies of the fourth or fifth degree. Right. So the uh, judge can't send them to prison. Well, uh -huh. we're trying, if we can identify a group and we got excellent, uh, an excellent drug task force operating in the county. Right. If we can identify a conspiracy, a criminal conspiracy, we're going after them for, for RICO charges. Oh, uh, okay. So, Very good. Oh, that's a good example. Is there anything else you wanted to talk about as far as what you would like to do in the future? Uh, that's that's uh, continue with the uh, ad, with the solid supply of services to our victims of crime and the victim assistance program. Okay, great. Well, thank you, and that sounds like a, a good plan to right. me. So thank you. We appreciate your time, and thank you for coming in today. You're more and than welcome. Glad to be election. here. Thank you. I right, thank you. You're welcome.